Hello everyone, Chris Tisdale here again. Thanks for tuning in. In this presentation, I am going to continue my live streams of A Beginner's Guide to Calculus. So last time we introduced the idea of a parametric curve and we learnt about how to compute its derivative. Now we're going to continue this with a basic example today, but just to refresh our memories. This is kind of your, your standard y equals f of x setup, and this is what parametric curves can do. So they can sort of model things and describe things in situations where this basic uh, framework is, is not suitable. Okay, so we introduced the idea of a parametric curve or a parameterized curve, and uh, we're working in two dimensions here in the xy plane. You can see each of x and y have this function which depends on a parameter, t. And the set, set of points here determine uh, the curve, a, a so-called parameterized curve. We worked out how to compute the derivative, dy dx, by using the chain rule. And I also introduced the idea of using, um, considering these things as vectors in the plane. So this is a vector function where you have your little i and j basis functions and basically the, the vector takes you from the origin to any point on the curve as you vary t. Okay, and to differentiate that you just differentiate the component functions and you get a vector. Okay, so that's a quick crash course. Let's look at an example. So you can see the sun is streaming in through my window here, so hopefully you can still see it. Um, here we have a parameterized curve where x and y are given by cosine t and sine t respectively. And the parameter, parameter the t, va uh, varies between 0 and 2 pi. The first question, compute the derivative dy dx. And then second part is which simple curve does the equation describe? So let's do the easy part first. We want to compute dy dx. We want to compute these two derivatives and divide one into the other. So you can think of this as your, your f of t, if you like, cosine t. This is like your g of t. All right, so let's go through and compute the derivatives of these things with respect to t. Okay, so uh, dx dt, okay, what is the derivative of cosine of t with respect to t? Well, it's negative sine t. And if we differentiate sine t with respect to t, we get cosine t. Thus, applying our little formula for dy dx, we get um, dy dt over dx dt and that is just cosine t over negative sine of t. Okay, now here I've got it in terms of t, you can if you look back, we can actually get it in terms of x and y because we can replace cosine t with x and sine t with y, which is nice in this case. So x over y. Okay, so that is our first part. And the second part is which simple curve does the equation describe? So what we're trying to do is relate. Um, one one way of doing this problem is to relate x and y to something familiar. So we can, if you think about what, how can we relate cosine and sine? Well, one way is to use the old rule that cosine squared plus sine squared equals one. Okay, so We have the following. Let me move that up a bit. That will be x squared. That will be y squared. And so the question is, what 
is this. Does this look familiar? Well, it should. It's the equation for a circle with center at the origin and radius one. So this then tells us what curve our original set of equations were describing. Okay, so let's have a look. It's a circle with center zero zero and here we have the one the radius squared over here and the radius equal to one okay so you know this it'd be something like this uh, I can do it like this so just a rough sketch a very rough sketch Okay, so we're in the xy plane here, and this is the curve. So the question here now is, well, what, what does the t represent? Does it, you can see it goes between 0 and 2 pi. Well, one way here is to think of t as being the angle to the positive x-axis, and as you increase t and rotate in an anti-clockwise direction, you'll get exactly one revolution and each point on the circle will be mapped okay now another way of looking at this is to think of this as a vector function so you would think of this as cosine t times i plus sine t times j where i and j are, are, your, are your little vectors they are your basis vectors they have length one and um, i points along uh, parallel to the positive x x axis and j points parallel to the positive y axis okay so what happens then is this vector function takes you from the origin to any point on on the graph so this thing would actually turn into a vector then and that would sort of be the vector would be r of t okay so two ways to look at it just through these sort of separated uh, points or you can combine it into some sort of vector function okay guys thanks for watching if you have any comments any questions i would love to hear them put them in the comment section please join me for the next beginner's guide to calculus bye guys thanks